Happy Sunday morning, boys and girls. It's your old pal, Andy France, the grand poobah of Judson Sunday School. Welcome back to another episode of Virtual Judson Sunday School, and welcome to the Jazz Club of Judson. I am so happy to have some very special guests joining us today. The first of which, I'll introduce him by saying, what am I talking about? I'll let him introduce himself. Joe Gardner. Welcome to the Jazz Club of Judson, Joe. Kids, I think you might recognize Joe as the star of the latest Disney Pixar movie, Soul. Soul is about many things, but first and foremost, it's about a middle school band leader and a pianist who aspires to be a professional jazz musician. Very early on in the movie, Joe gets a phone call from the Half Note Jazz Club, to come down and audition for the Dorothea Williams Quartet. Now, here's a little inside information for those of you who love the movie. If you ever want to see the Half Note Jazz Club in real life, then get on over to the Village Vanguard, New York City's oldest operating jazz club. It's on 7th Avenue. It is between Perry and 11th Streets and in the West Village. Um, New York City is, of course, the center of the jazz world. We have so many wonderful jazz clubs, hopefully all of whom are going to survive this pandemic. But the Village Vanguard is probably our most revered jazz club. Seoul used the Village Vanguard as its model for the Half Note Jazz Club. And boy, did they ever get it right. From the red door to the awning on the sidewalk on 7th Avenue, to that long stairwell that descends down to the club itself, to the tiny jazz stage where the musicians perform, to even those uh, pictures of jazz greats lining the walls. Although in the vanguard, those pictures are actually in the club and not in the stairwell going down. But I'm being a little picky. Anyway, at the audition, Joe wows Dorothea Williams with his piano playing, and he gets the gig which leads to the first of several lessons this movie offers for you and me. Everything from finding your spark to uh, understanding life's purpose. But the first lesson it offers us is this. Always watch where you're walking. Unfortunately for Joe, he's so excited about getting his dream job that he's not watching where he's walking and he falls through an open manhole. And the next thing he knows, he's in the afterlife on a conveyor belt ascending to a bright light. Now, let me just say one quick word about that afterlife. Don't get too hung up on everything you see in the movie after Joe falls through that manhole. Soul is a very entertaining movie, and it has a lot of creative ideas about what happens to people after they die even before they're born. Everything from that, um, oh, the excitable pavilion and the hall of everything to that soul monitoring program, you remember that? And uh, even those mystics without borders. But the truth is, nobody really knows what happens after you die. We have a lot of great ideas, some of which are quite comforting, like this notion that we might all uh, be reunited with our loved ones who've gone on before us. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And different religions have different ideas about what happens to people after they die as well, which they write down in their holy books. Everything from heaven, uh, where the righteous might go someday, to hell, where the bad folks go, even, um, even reincarnation, that idea that your soul is reborn and starts all over again in a new body. But as I said, no one really knows for sure, and that's okay. It's like an old college religion professor of mine once said, eh, we'll find out when we get there. Anyway, back to the movie. What happens after Joe Gardner dies in Seoul is that we say goodbye to Joe's body, and we say hello to Joe's soul. Hello, Joe's soul. 
I am a jazz musician. So he's a jazz musician too. Joe Soul uh, has a lot of experiences in the afterlife. He gets to meet a lot of characters, all of whom for some reason are named Jerry. Go figure that one out. Joe's soul is mistaken for one of those um, soul mentors, and he is paired with a new soul trying to find her spark. Do you happen to remember the name of the new soul by any chance? Ha! Ah, trick question. She doesn't have a name. She has a number. Meet 22. Oh, trying to find her purpose. That's a voice. <laughs> that tickles. I'm a pessimistic, hyper-empathetic skeptic. Well, so, Joe's soul tries to help uh, 22 find her uh, purpose. And 22 tries to help Joe's soul return to the Half Note Jazz Club so that he can play that dream gig. Oh, yeah, there's somebody else, too. There's a therapy cat involved. Meet Mr. Mittens. This Mr. Mittens doesn't talk. Anyway, what happens next to all of these characters? Well, if you want to find that out, you have to see the movie. Well, kids, let's bring back Joe Gardner for a moment. That's me, Joe Gardner. I am a jazz musician. Joe Gardner, he's a jazz musician, but what in the world is a jazz musician? Or for that matter, what is jazz? Jazz is a type of music. Now, we all know there are lots of kinds of music, lots of types of music out there. There is classical, you know, um, bum, 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 bum. Classical music, it's serious. There is rock and roll. I want to hold your hand but not until the pandemic's over. There is country music. Well, baby, it seems bow, 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 like we're out of luck. Bow, 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 bow. I wish I had known this bow, 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 before I bought you that truck. Boom, 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 boom. There's also the blues. Well, since my baby left me, I just can't find my shoes. Sing it with me. Well, since my baby left me, I just can't find my shoes. Won't somebody help me find my footwear? Then help me find my baby, too. That's the blues. Oh, in case you haven't figured this out, 99% of popular music is about trying to find your baby after she's left. Anyway, there are all kinds of music. There is pop and punk and rap and hip-hop and salsa. Um, the music, not the dip you put your chips in. And there is jazz. Now, like all of these other types of music, jazz has three things. It has melody, the tune of the song. It has harmony, the uh, accompanying notes that give that tune a richer, fuller sound. And it has rhythm, the beat of the song. Boom, 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 boom. But what sets jazz apart from all those other kinds of music is something called improvisation which is our word of the day. Wow, that is a big word. What in the world does improvisation mean? Well, improvisation means to compose or create something new spontaneously, on the spot, while you are performing. In jazz, a musician or a band of musicians might start with a well-known melody. Say something like, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. We all know that song. 
then, using that well-known melody as a starting point or as a jumping off place, the musicians might add to it or take away from it, bringing their own ideas to that song. That's the genius of jazz. By adding your own voice, your own personality, you breathe new life into the music and the song becomes your own. But hey, why listen to a grand poobah talk about improvisation? Or jazz, for that matter. Wynton Marcellus is an award-winning trumpet player, composer, teacher, and he's the director of jazz at Lincoln Center. Let's watch and listen as Wynton Marcellus shows us what improvisation is all about. Now, the first thing about the improvisation is the melody. Dans la première chose pour l'improvisation, c'est la mélodie. Let's say we take, always I play this song. I start with the song. Donc, vous avez entendu, il commence avec la chanson, avec la mélodie. Can you, you've heard this song before? Vous l'avez déjà entendu, cette chanson, cette mélodie? Okay, now, Victor is going to play the melody of this song, and I'm going to play an improvisation around it. Donc, Victor va jouer la mélodie de la chanson, et uh, M. Marsalès, il va faire une improvisation autour de cette mélodie. Wasn't that great? Thank you, Wynton Marcellus. Now, some of you might be thinking to yourselves, well, this is all interesting, Andy, but what in the world does it have to do with Sunday school? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. I'd think two things, and I'm going to wrap up this lesson part of our time together with these things. First, we are in the middle of our own virtual Judson Sunday School African American History Month. And African American history is more than just remembering those old marches or all of those uh, iconic civil rights heroes, the Rosa Parks and the Dr. Kings and the John Lewises. It's also about recognizing and celebrating African American contributions to our culture. Jazz music originated in the African American communities of New Orleans, Louisiana in the late 1800s and early 1900s. It is a uniquely African American gift to the world. And so for those of us who appreciate and love jazz music, it's important that we remember and that we recognize and that we celebrate those roots. Second, do you remember in the movie Soul, toward the end, when 22 gets so excited about all the pleasures she is experiencing on earth. And I think she says, um, she starts to relate everything in terms of jazz. I think at one point she says, we're jazzing. Well, as a grand poobah, I tend to think of faith. What a person believes or how a person feels about God is kind of jazzy. Look. In Sunday school, we learn a foundation, a melody, scripture, 
prayers, morals, um, what else? Uh, stories, moral stories, Bible stories, what have you. But faith is more than just a foundation. It's more than just memorizing a melody. Faith is a little like Wynton Marsalis playing Happy Birthday. He may start with that standard tune, the foundation, but soon he brings his own ideas, his own personality and experience to the melody, and he makes the song his own. The same thing applies to faith. We take the melody, the foundation we're learning here at Judson, or wherever someone is learning the foundations of their faith, be it a church or a synagogue or a mosque, and then we add to it. We subtract from it. We, um, let me see, we apply our own life experiences. We question it. Don't just take my word for it. In short, we bring our own voice then your faith becomes more than just singing someone else's tune. Your faith becomes uniquely your own song. Well, boys and girls, years from now, when someone asks me, what did you do during the pandemic? I'm probably going to say, eh, I mostly played with dolls. Let me introduce you to our latest doll here at Judson, this is Ms. Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald is the subject of our story today, but before we get to that story, I want you to hear her sing. Now, Ella Fitzgerald had many nicknames. She was the, um, the first lady of song, the queen of scat. Do you know what scat singing is? Scat singing is improvised singing made up nonsense words and sounds created on the spot while you're performing, trying to imitate the sounds that the band is playing. Ella was called the Queen of Scat. And I thought it would be great if you could get a little taste of Ella Scat singing. So here's a tiny bit of one of her great songs called Airmail Special. Well, that's probably enough. Thank you so much, Ella. I will kill the band. Wasn't that great? Does scat singing like something you'd like to try? We'll do just that in a few minutes. But first, let's get to today's story. Ella Fitzgerald was born in 1917. She spent the first years of her life in Yonkers, New York. You know where that is? Just outside of the city. But tragedy struck Ella's life at an early age. Her mother passed away when she was only 15. Ella spent the next few years bouncing out and uh, back and forth between a relative's home and an orphanage. And then she wound up living on the streets of Harlem in the middle of the Great Depression, tap dancing on street corners for spare change. Let's get to her story. It's Ella Fitzgerald, The Tale of a Vocal Virtuosa by Andrea Davis Pinckney and Brian Pinckney. Now a virtuosa or a virtuoso is a highly skilled musician. Well, what do we have here? We have a cat telling the story. You may think I look like any other cat, but baby, 
I'm in a class all by myself. Scat Cat's my name, Scat Cat Monroe, a name I've earned. Got my name from Noan Ella, Ella Fitzgerald, the queen of scat. What's scat, you ask? Scat's the sound that don't hold back. Ella's sound, that was scat. Singing so supreme, music's velvet ribbon dream. Let me tell you Ella's story, because, you see, I was there from the get-go. I saw it all, me, Scat Cat Monroe. I watched Ella go from a small-town girl to the first lady of song to a vocal virtuosa, bar none. So sit back, listen up. Here's four tracks, cut to cut. Here's how Ella got her sound, got her silken silver style, got her Lady Ella scat. Track one, Hoofin in Harlem. The child's name was Ella. She was a big-boned girl with dreams of becoming a dancer. But there weren't many dance schools in Yonkers, New York, the little city where Ella Fitzgerald and her mother, Tempe, lived. Ella had her heart set on pretty step in her way to fame, and she didn't need a dance school to do it. She taught herself to tap dance. Determination was her teacher. The sidewalk was her stage. Imagination was her spotlight. In time, Ella and her friends took to performing on street corners. When Ella's neighbors saw her go, they told Ella to strut her shuffle in Harlem to take her hoofing to New York, the big city, where dreams really do come true. That's when Harlem became Ella's stomping ground. On the night of November 1st, 1934, Ella entered a talent contest at the Apollo Theater. She was 17 and scrubbed clean down to her toe jam. Ugh. But as soon as Ella saw the footlights, her feet failed her. She stood front and center, knees knocking, teeth clacking, a wannabe with a stomach full of butterflies. And the girl was hardly dressed to impress. She wore work boots and hand-me-downs. Luckily, Ella was thinking on her toes. She refused to be booed back to Yonkers, so she started to sing. At first, her voice came out quiet as a whisper, a measly little hiss, soft as a cricket. But when the band joined in, Ella rolled out a tune sweet enough to bake. She won the contest straight up, kicked her dance dreams to the curb, and pinned all her hopes on being a singer. By the way, I think you're going to love these pictures. Aren't they great? This is track two, jamming at Yale. Soon, Ella had audiences eating out of her hand. She went on to win talent showcases all over Harlem. In 1935, the Harlem Opera House signed her as a featured singer. One night, Bardu Ali, the master of ceremonies for the Chick Webb Orchestra, saw Ella perform. That's when Bardu knew, knew that Chick needed Ella and that Ella needed Chick that the two of them could make beautiful music together. When Bardo, when Bardu took Ella to meet Chick, Chick agreed to give Ella a chance. He told her she could sing with his orchestra at a college dance the next night at Yale University, the Ivy League, where getting loose don't always come easy. Chick told Ella that if she could work that college crowd, she could join his band. So Ella went to Yale with a purpose. And man, once Ella started to sing, she had them Yaleys jamming. That night, Chick welcomed Ella into his band. He took her under his wing, and the two of them flew to the Savoy Ballroom, the hippest dance spot in Harlem. Track three, Stompin' at the Savoy. The Chick Webb Orchestra had a regular gig at the Savoy night after night. They played to a house packed tighter than the A-Train. The place was crammed full of folks who'd come to shake their tails to the orchestra sound. And honey, yours truly could shake with the best of them. You ever see a cat do the kangaroo? The Lindy Hop? The Susie Q? Those were the moves we danced at the Savoy. Danced while Ella belted from the bandstand. It was Chick's drumming that pulled people onto the dance floor. It was Ella's singing that kept them there. 
Ella was not like other highfalutin singers. She never forgot where she came from. She remembered that her first work as a performer had been on the street. After Ella sang, she stepped down from the stage and danced with her fans. Ella let them know that she was one of them. She showed them that she could kangaroo too. She stomped at the Savoy like any other paying customer. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's our cat dancing away. On May 11th, 1937, the Chick Webb Orchestra took on the Benny Goodman Orchestra in the Savoy's Battle of the Bands. These contests were a Savoy tradition, and child, they were fierce. One band tried to outplay the other till the crowd, with their applause, named the winner. Benny Goodman was called the King of Swing. He played the clarinet, but King Benny didn't have Ella who would someday be known as the queen of her craft. And he didn't have Chick Webb, a royal percussionist. The contest was close from the get-go. Those musicians put a fever to the room. They had me sweating the sheen off my fur and scuffing my wingtip shoes. When Chick's band played Harlem Congo, the crowd got hotter than bootleg Tabasco. That's because Ella set Harlem Congo on fire. Her voice was quick, fried rhythm with a brassy satin twist. She sizzled with chick cymbals, busted loose with his bongos. She tamed the crowd while Chick played his timpani. And man, that ain't all. Ella worked the downbeat. She milked the backbeat. She sang like tomorrow wasn't ever going to come. 4,000 people filled the Savoy that night. The contest lasted five hours. When it was over, everybody knew who was boss. Track four, Carnegie Hall Scat. The Savoy was Ella's stepping stone. Thanks to nightly radio broadcasts from the club, Ella was the name sitting pretty on everybody's lips. Ella took the Chip Webb Orchestra to new heights. She was the orchestra's star attraction. Nightclub owners had to wait in line to book the band. Some of them had never had a black singer perform at their clubs. Ella's popularity showed them that a true star has no color. It just shines. Ella didn't shy from any kind of music. When bebop became hotter than swing jazz and music lovers turned to bird and dizzy, Ella took her place on the bebop bandwagon. Kids, there are many different kinds of jazz music, swing, whatever. Bebop is a very popular one, too. Bebop was jazz on the wild side. It was syncopation, locomotion, fast smack, sound done low down. It was slam bamming on the flitter tip. It was ham hock jabber, fever pitch. Dizzy Gillespie was Bebop's main man. He turned jazz on its head. With his trumpet, he could blow notes into backflips, into flatted fifths, into popcorn blips that flung free from his horn. Dizzy asked Ella to join his band. He invited Ella to give Bebop a try, to improvise, to sing the ping-pong rhythms that gave Bebop its sound. Ella went along for Dizzy's ride. One night, when the two of them started to jam, Ella made Bebop her own. For Ella, scat singing drove Bebop home. Ella used her voice in the same way Dizzy used the notes he made with his horn, like a runaway leaf flying high on a breeze. Now, when Ella performed, she let her lyrics go. She took her singing out to play. When Ella recorded How High the Moon, her scat swung to cloud nine and back. On September 29th, 1947, Ella and Dizzy headlined a sold-out performance at Carnegie Hall. They brought Bebop to a high and mighty concert stage, but the show was far from uppity. It was fun. Dizzy's trumpet chirped, it zipped, it sputtered in double-time tempo. Ella's singing hung fast to Dizzy's rhythm. 
Dizzy bounced his bebop to Ella. Ella shot him back her scat. Man, those two were making up music in the moment. It was invention. It was frolic. It was cooler than cool. Ella put scat on the map. When she and Dizzy threw down their skippity doo dee bop every soul in the place slipped into the jam. Oh, I love that picture of all the cities on Ella's dress. Ella soon had fans who loved all kinds of music. They came to call Ella by many names. The queen of scat, the first lady of song, a vocal virtuosa. Now, I'm the keeper of Ella's flame, the teller of her tale, the scat cat. So kid, don't be fooled by phony felines. A cat by any other name ain't the same. Take it from me, Scat Cat Monroe. I was there with Ella from the get-go. Ella Fitzgerald. Well, kids, it's time to sing with Tom Waits or to sing Tom Waits' song, Little Trip to Heaven. And I promised you a little tiny bit of scat singing which comes in at the end of this song. If you have your music, if you will turn, if you have your uh, picture lyrics, if you will turn to page six, we're going to start with the last verse. And since I've sort of kept you a long time today with all these different uh, uh, dolls and things happening, we're just going to sing the last verse and the ending today, which has our little scat part on it. So, Again, if you've got picture lyrics, go to page six. I'm going to hold them up. We'll talk through the lyrics, and then we'll sing the verse. All right? Uh, it starts with, you're my north star. Another one of those picture, uh, space pictures that we've got going. So it's, you and R, you're my north star. When She's winning. And there's that, remember the lady's putting up a lost and found poster for her dog, and her dog, she sat on it. So, when I'm lost and feeling, feeling, nothing more than feeling, feeling blue. We've got that little boy there dressed up as a blue crayon. The sun is breaking. The kid's breaking a pinata. Through, he threw, even though it's spelled differently, the balloon. The clouds, you've got clouds. Don't walk. Don't you know it's true? There's Marge Simpson, and she's raising her right hand swearing to tell the truth in the court. So this verse sings, sounds like this. You're my north star when I'm lost and feeling blue. The sun is breaking through the clouds. Don't you know it's true? Turn the page to page seven. Oh, sorry, that's page. Where's page seven? Ah, you know, this absolutely is the hardest part of my job. Here we are. Uh, so we just sang. What are we saying? We sang um, page six. Don't you know it's true? Honey, all the other stars seem dim around you. We got poo going for the honey. All detergent. Stars dim sum. Seem dim around. That's our roundabout. We've had all of these pictures before. Around you. Thanking. Remember that from earlier. Thanking my lucky stars that I found you, lost and found you, when I see your smiling face. We got all those faces there. Honey, I know nothings. And th so this sounds like, uh, it sounds like, uh, don't you know it's true? Honey, all the other stars seem dim around you. Three, four. Thanking my lucky stars that I found you. When I see your smiling face. Now this is a little tricky. He says, honey, I know nothings. Turn the page. Gonna take your place. And it's you. And this is where it really gets tricky. So from the bottom of page seven, we know, honey, I know nothings. Gonna take your place. And we'll, let's cut out that word ever, if you don't mind. Uh, gonna take your place. And then we have a bunch of these, and it's you's. And they go like this. And it's you, 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 and it's you. Then we turn to the last page. And it's you, 
and it's you. And now we have our scat, which is nothing but made up sounds to sound like an instrument. And in this case, it's to sound like a trumpet, uh, a muted trumpet. So it says, shoo be do. We have a shoe, we have a bee, we have mountain do. Shoo be do, bop. The guy's got hit on the head, bop. What's the lamb say? Ba. And the kid at the end here, a baby, is saying da, as in da, da, da. So we have shoo be do, bop, ba, da. And it sounds like this. And it's you, I'm uh, sorry, and it's you, and it's you, and it's you, and it's you. You know, boy, if I wanted to cut, I would cut right now. But anyway, we'll go to this. Shooby doo ba ba da. Try that little scat with me. Shooby doo ba ba da. All right, let's take it from the top of this verse, which is back on page six, if I remember correctly. Yes, six. You're my North Star. Gonna get my pages in order. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here we go. From the top. One, Two, ready. You're my north star when I'm lost and feeling blue. Three, four. The sun is breaking through the clouds. Don't you know it's true? Turn the page. It's <laughs> pathetic. Honey, all the other stars seem dim around you. Thanking my lucky stars that I found you. When I see your smiling face, honey, I know nothing's going to take your place. And it's you, 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 and it's you. Turn to the last page. And it's you, and it's you. Ready? Shooby doo ba ba da. We'll do better next week. Thanks. Well, boys and girls, it looks like we've managed to do it again. We've somehow gotten through yet another episode of Virtual Judson Sunday School. As always, I want to thank Andre and Michelle for all their help, particularly today with all of these talking dolls and moving parts. So thank you very much for helping us put this together. I want to thank you for being with me today as well. I want to thank Joe for being with me. Joe, got anything to say? That's me, Joe Gardner. I am a jazz musician. Yes, he is. Uh, before I say goodbye, I have just a couple of announcements for you. First... I am thrilled to be able to tell you that we are about to be offering, that um, Judson Sunday School is about to offer you another program, another opportunity for your family, for your kids. Our good friend Lulu Fogarty, longtime Judson kid, longtime Judson teacher, and my assistant for several years now, uh, has put together a virtual art activity program. It's going to be called Judson Sunday Arts. It's going to be found on Judson's YouTube channel, and I believe you can find it this weekend. It's actually for all ages. I understand there might be a few people watching this that aren't necessarily in the age bracket, but it's for everybody. Each week, uh, the program will offer something new that relates or ties into the theme of the lessons that uh, we're having on, uh, on Sundays. Um, she's been working really hard this month, catching up. So I think this weekend there are actually two offerings which go along with our first two themes of our African American History Month this year, Undefeated and Good Trouble. And then next week she'll offer two more and then we'll be caught up and she'll have one every week. Uh, you can contact Lou by emailing her at judsonsundayarts at gmail.com. I know she'll be in touch with you parents out there and give you more information about this, but we're so happy to have this. Thank you, Lou, for all of your hard work. Second, I'm going to leave you with one more video. Some of you know I am a huge dance fan, and I am a huge fan of the Alvin Ailey Dance Theater Company. And one of their signature dances is called Ella. 
and it's performed to airmail special, which we heard earlier. Now, the actual dance is about four and a half minutes long. All I have for you uh, going out today is about a minute and a half long. It's a promotional video, but it is wonderful. It's danced by two of Alvin Ailey's best dancers, Samantha Figgins and Shelvar Montero. So I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it. And who knows, once this stupid pandemic is over, maybe we can all get uptown and watch uh, Alvin Ailey and then perform at City Center, and we can watch Ella in its entirety. So until then, thank you again for being with me today. I hope you have a great week, that you continue to stay safe. I hear people are wearing two masks now just to be on the safe side, so you might consider that. Do keep a place for this place in your heart. And I'll see you next time on Virtual Judson Sunday School. Ah, 